Welcome to Digital Asset News. Take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down into bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some concerning news, I would say. First up is from you today. Whales are dumping chain link in mass. This is what the data is pointing to. So the question really is, how far or how low can chain link actually go also? Cardano is set to take over Ethereum's DeFi business if ridiculously high transaction fees persist. So really got to ask yourself, well, how high are the fees and how close is Cardano actually to doing this? And lastly, we go over a question today where I answer the question, which I did not do on the video from yesterday, which is how the heck do I buy Theta? But we'll get into all that in a second. Let's just go over the market, see what's happening. So today, Wednesday, August 19th, and uh, more red, which is uh, not surprising because we had a fantastic run for quite a while. Bitcoin down 2.5%. So below 12K it goes. But uh, I have a optimism that we will see uh, that reach relatively soon. But who knows? Ethereum down 5%, but still able to stay above that $400 level, which, man, I got to tell you, that makes me super happy. XRP, 20 cents watch out tether is tether chain link um actually is actually at 4.6 percent today so uh pretty good now we are below uh the all-time high of i think it was 20 dollars and one cent but you know anywhere around 17 dollars i'm pretty happy i mean i picked up chain link a long time ago and i'm happy with uh what's going on but we're going to take a look at an article which states that things can get really rough bitcoin cash cardano litecoin i mean everything's down across the board tron down 10 percent uh usd coin eh, whatever and uh, everything else. So today, not a fantastic day, but look, you gotta take the lows with the highs and we've been riding high for quite some time. So let's just jump in and see what's going on in the news. So first up, more bad news. Wells dumping chain link in mass says data. And when we go over this, I want you to take this with a grain of salt because you have to understand that uh, these whales, I mean, whales are whales and they're only here for a finite amount of time. I think it's going to be changed on the horizon. So according to data provided by crypto analytics firm Santiment, the number of link addresses that hold from 100,000 to 10 million tokens has been on the decline since August 6th. The headline grabbing crypto corrected to uh, corrected by almost 27% after reaching a lifetime peak of $20.10 on August 16th. So yeah, just uh, three days ago, it was up pretty massively. And I got to tell you, once it started to go up uh, past 9, past 10, past 11, uh, you could take a look at some traders were like, hey, I don't think it's going to go past this. And it went 12 and then 14 and then 15. Take a look at the RSI, uh, the strength index, and you could see it was over uh, overbought, but still kept going up. And uh, here we are. I mean, it went up to $20 and retraced back to 16 almost 17 But I mean, hey, um, you can't uh, be too unhappy about that. And there's been there was videos that I did along the way where people were continuously asking me, hey, should I get into Chainlink? Should I get into Chainlink? It's going to be huge. It hurts me awesome. It's going to be $100. And I said, just calm down. Just relax. I've, this is not my first rodeo. I've been in this game before. And I can tell you right now that uh, what goes up will invariably come down. So don't bet the farm on it, you know. And this is what people ask me like at $17, $18, $19. I'm like, don't bet the farm. Dollar cost average in. Buy a little bit here. You know, wait for two, three, seven, 14 days, whatever it is that you feel comfortable with. And then buy some more. Because, um, you know, you never know. If if you think that, oh, it's going to go up forever, well, guess what? It's not. If you just dollar cost average in, it's just a safer way to do things. That's that's all I'm saying. Anyhow, into this article, Barstool Sports founder Dave Portney declaring himself the captain of <laughs> the captain of Link Marines. And mainstream media is starting to cover Link Market, the local top uh, of 1,018% rally. So if you didn't catch this, this was a, uh, a story that we did a couple of days ago. David Portney, he is the uh, CEO, and I guess he was a former owner of Barstools. He sold it for you know millions and millions of dollars uh, a couple of years ago. But uh, he actually sent out a, a tweet to the Winklevoss twins and goes, I don't understand Bitcoin, so come and teach it to me. And ugh, these guys came over. I guess that's what big money does. When another big money guy says, hey, I didn't need any help, they're like, sure. Um, actually, I think it's more so that he's got a, like, you know, a million plus Twitter followers. So, you know, they're just there to, uh, to push out the message. So they went over there and, uh, this guy bought $250,000, I think 200,000 went to Bitcoin, 50,000 went to Chainlink, And he was like, so impressed because he's, he does a lot with day trading now and he has a bunch of followers and they follow him on the day, his day trading exp expo. 
And uh, he's been tweeting a lot about cryptocurrency and digital assets. So that is fantastic news. What's not good news is that uh, I'm afraid that he probably, you know, <laughs> was victim of FOMO and bought in at uh, a high and probably kept buying and uh, probably lost right now. So again, I see this as a positive for, for cryptocurrency digital assets just to get the message out there. I think it's also negative uh, because you can see all the volatility, but who knows? Uh, they say uh, uh, all press is good press, right? So we'll see how that works out. Anyhow, finishing up, on-chain analyst Ali Martinez estimated that roughly 64 whales have now left the network. And you gotta understand about whales, and that is that everybody's afraid of them, and you know they're so awful and, and whatnot. They're just, I mean, look, they're just people making money. And the thing is, is that uh, this is the same thing with Bitcoin. It's the same thing. Uh, whales control, or you know, there was more whales that control the massive amount uh, of Bitcoin, and they sell it or dump it, whatever you want to call it, and uh, when, when the price goes up, because they're here to make a profit. But here's the thing: there's only so many whales out there. And there's a lot of us, the small players, the ones that uh, you know pick this up. And these whales, at some point, they're going to dump and they're going to they're going to sell off. But at some point, these digital assets will be in the hands of the people that really deserve not deserve that really need it and want it and are gonna, and have strong hands and will hold on to it for quite some time. So it's all this all these this Bitcoin, these digital assets, this chain link that was in the hands of these whales. Is getting shaken out because these guys are like, I mean, they, they're not going to hold forever, okay? They're going to sell it. They're going to invest into something else and get into something bigger or whatever else they're going to do. But that's how it works. And it's going to disseminate down to us and we're going to have more piece of the pie. Now, uh, there are ways to uh, not get caught with these whales, which is avoid the FOMO. And I always talk about it. There is, there is one rule. Actually, there's two rules of cryptocurrency. The first rule is we don't FOMO. The second rule is we don't FOMO. So if you just avoid those types of things, just be careful. Don't bet the farm. You'll be okay. And then all these whales that are, are dumping or selling on us, uh, we'll just pick it up here and there. And uh, later on, whales get out because we have the control. All right. Let me know what you think about that. Let's move on to the next story. So next up, I like this one. Cardano said to take over Ethereum's DeFi business if these high transaction fees persist. So Ethereum's network fees are uh, huge and they're becoming a, a major concern and more people are wary of paying the fees, blah, blah, blah. Okay. No one really cares about that. What, what really matters is what's the fees? So there is this site it's called whitecharts.com forward slash indicators forward slash Ethereum. And uh, just look up, uh, you know, uh, Ethereum fees and you'll find it. So these are the, the Ethereum fees right now. And you can see back in the day, I mean, 0 0.007, pretty nice, right? But that's when Ethereum wasn't worth much. And then it kind of came up and then a little congestion. And this was in June 27, 2017 at 41 cents. And people were out of their mind like, what, 41 cents? It used to be less than a penny back here. And then here we are. And then during the great bull run, bull run, bull run, uh, December 2017, you had a spike and it was $1.11 and people were freaking out over that. And then it kind of came down a little bit. Then in 2018, when it was kind of coming, you know, uh, really hitting a crescendo, you had it at $3.12 and people again lost their minds like this is ridiculous. And of course, the big sell off and here we are, came back again, nothing, here we are. Coming in. And now take a look at where we're at right now. So if you can take a look at the highs, the high highs, uh, we were at one point at Seven dollars and thirty Jesus, seven dollars and thirty-six cents. That is amazingly high, right? Now we're sitting around three dollars somewhere around. Looks uh, last value, three fifty-seven, and that is for uh, today. Uh, well, yesterday. So pretty amazing, pretty high, and um, I don't see it really going down because DeFi has just been hot for so long. But I mean, who knows? It, it'll hopefully come down a little bit. But uh, that is ridiculous amount of fees to pay. And that's just for like an average. If you want to get something done, uh, you got to pay through the nose uh, for the Ethereum fees. Like I, I had to do a couple things and, the, and I was like, yeah, I'll wait. It's been like two days. So I mean, it gets kind of ridiculous. Anyhow, back to the story. Etherscan, this is what, well, this gets to it, the, the, the meat of it. Etherscan currently recommends a gas price of 350 G way, how you ever want to say it, for a 20 second transaction waiting time. Uh, meaning that people are paying as much as $50 to process transactions to ETH. So here's the thing like, I mean, you can wait like I do. I'm not paying 50 bucks. I'm not, I, I refuse. So I'll just wait for it and that'll be it. But that kind of goes against the whole principle 
of cryptocurrency digital assets. It's supposed to be fast. I mean, it's supposed to be like uh, not instantaneous, but I mean, as fast as it can go. But right now, we're looking at speeds of like uh, Bank of America speeds. And that's not what I got into it for. So uh, hopefully uh, with the roll of ETH 2.0, things get a little better. But there is something on the horizon. And what they're talking about here is that there was a crypto enthusiast, and I'll show you in a bit, that, that called on Cardano's Charles Hoskinson to launch smart contracts and native assets faster so that all the DeFi business on Ethereum can be posted to Cardano, which I think is pretty interesting. So this was the guy. This is Anthony Garretts from Twitter. And he just says, hey, I mean, transaction fees are crazy. And uh, can, you know, Cardano do anything with that? And Charles Hoskinson, which some of you love and some of you hate, says, uh, hey, I can't imagine it, which is why I built Cardano. Nice little dig. Then some other people down here just say, yeah, 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 right. It's never going to happen. But uh, but really, could it happen? I mean, could it happen? We see this all the time, right? We talk about this all the time about the emerging technology. You know, we talk about um, Netscape as far as a browser and then came along Firefox and then came along Chrome and then came along Brave. And then you had social media platforms like MySpace and then you had Facebook. Now you have Instagram and TikTok. I mean, things just kind of get better as time goes on, right? So who knows where it could go? Let me know what you think in the, in the comments section, but uh, I hedge my bet. That's all I'll say. So moving down to the, to the final piece, because the rest of it's kind of boring. Transaction fees are only going to get worse with increasing DeFi activity. Yes, it will. And while ETH 2.0 will try and address this issue, which I hope it does, I, I hope it actually makes itself and, and does real well. But uh, some feel that it may be time to dethrone Ethereum with better and already available solutions. And I got to tell you, as far as like hedging my bet, this is... This is why I've invested in the things that I've actually invested into. So that would be uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Cardano, Chainlink, EOS, Tezos, Stellar, VeChain, and uh, the new guy, Theta. So um, you may notice that uh, this has changed because I actually had to update this, not just for Theta, uh, but the amount of my holdings. And I got to tell you, because of the massive run up for Chainlink, this is the percentage as far as price of uh, what I actually hold. Uh, for all these different uh, projects and uh, Chainlink was uh, a big run so we'll see what happens I mean hey it's cryptocurrency it could go to zero tomorrow who knows but the thing is I mean I buy all these things for a specific reason not just because they're the shiny object or they look cool or someone says this is gonna be awesome I look at it because like when I look at Bitcoin Bitcoin's the first and I always and I always talk about this about uh, this firecracker theory I have it's like firecrackers on a chain the first one to go off will be the oldest which is to me is bitcoin and it's what everybody talks about right now it's what all the institutions are you know gabbing about and and getting into so uh bitcoin is going to do really well in the short term medium term long term i have no idea but uh that's not my concern right now i just know that bitcoin i truly believe will pop off first and then i have ethereum um because Everything that has to do with decentralized finance, everything that has to do with smart contracts, uh, Ethereum was also in that realm of the first, and I think it has a lot of activity. It's got a great team. It's got smart people. It's got a lot of contacts. It's got a lot of uh, partnerships. So Ethereum, uh, I think, will do very well. Now, here's the thing. Just like what we talked about in this article, I think uh, there is room because everybody wants to hit hit up the king. And right now, Ethereum is the king right now of that sector. So what could that mean? That's why I invested into Cardano and EOS and Tezos uh, for the smart contract capability. So uh, if they don't, if Ethereum doesn't make it, hey, doesn't make it. Uh, I'm not here to shed tears. I'm here to make a profit. And uh, that's why I invested in other parts. XRP and uh, Stellar, I invested into cross-border payments and remittances. Uh, XRP is more like the banker's coin, um, so I got into that because I thought that'd be good. But then Stellar, I like their their business plan, which is to bank the unbanked, and uh, I can I can get behind that. So I think one of those will win out. Don't know which one it is, so I got them both. And then uh, Chainlink, all these different smart contracts we talk about, they all need what's called an oracle. I know there's other oracles coming up, but Again, Chainlink's the first. Now, I might get into something else later, but right now, uh, Chainlink, like I talk about the firecracker theory, uh, I think it's the next one to pop off. And if all these different smart contracts work, whether that be uh, Ethereum, EOS, Cardano, or whatever, um, or Tezos, uh, they're going to need some type of oracle, and I think Chainlink's it. So VeChain and Theta, um, VeChain, and, VeChain just makes sense to me uh, because of my Amazon business, uh, because I need to track these types of things. I need to see, like, especially for these 
these uh, Shifty. Well, I used to work with Shifty distributors in China. I cut them off. I after everything happened, I just I just don't deal with them. So, um, but with VeChain, I mean, to actually be able to track for forgeries, for I mean, just think about like like Nike. And then there was an aerospace uh, person. One of their comments said that they have a real problem with uh, counterfeit parts. And uh, when they get them in, they're like, well, we hope these things work. I mean, they have to test them and everything else. But to eliminate counterfeit on that part, on baby formula, on different products that are like high-end stuff, VeChain is it. I like it. And not only that, we talked about uh, yesterday about their partnership with the third largest uh, pasta producing uh, company in uh, Italy where they are um, – verifying all the different aspects that the employees have to do to meet coronavirus regulations. So, I mean, VeChain only makes sense to me. And Theta is the last one. And Theta, because of what's going on with esports, because of what is going on with um, the, the bandwidth problem, I would say, because we all need bandwidth. And the, in the share economy, Theta takes the unused bandwidth that you're not using, and you earn T-Fuel, and it has a bunch of partnerships, and one of the uh, co-founders, or uh, person involved, I guess, will be the co-founder of YouTube. So that's a very long uh, reason, but that's why I invest in these things. And uh, I think uh, one of them is going to do well, if not if not all of them. Who knows? All right. And uh, speaking of Theta, this this is the lead us to the question today because I talked about uh, adding Theta as uh, to my portfolio yesterday, and I wanted to. The problem was that people asked me, "Well, where'd you get it? Where'd you get it? Where do you get it?" And I I messed up. I didn't tell you exactly where to get it because now I can get a Coinbase. So let's jump in the office and I'll explain. All right, everybody. Welcome back to the office. So on yesterday's video, I talked about uh, there was a new addition to my portfolio. One, I was going to massively increase my uh, my purchase of VeChain, which I started off yesterday. And the next one I talked about was getting Theta. So I said, yeah, I'm going to get Theta. I'm going to add it to my portfolio. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't uh, explain to you exactly how I was going to buy Theta because it's like you just go to Coinbase or Kraken or Gemini or any of the big exchanges uh, to get Theta. They actually has to jump through some hoops. Now, let me just say this. Uh, we are so early in this, uh, our little cryptocurrency digital asset ventures that uh, it's actually difficult to get the things that you want. So think about that. All the things that, that you uh, can have or should have are usually at, the, at, at your fingertips. But with cryptocurrency, it doesn't work like that. Sometimes you got to jump through some hoops to get what you're looking for. So uh, I'm going to uh, jump it back into my computer, and I'm going to show you exactly how this goes. It's uh, a little tricky uh, at first for, for those of you who are the uninitiated who don't do this too much. Uh, I don't do this too much myself. I kind of stick to the easy things. But uh, it, uh, it will actually pay dividends, I believe, in the future. So uh, let's jump into my computer. All right, first things first, if you look in the description of my videos, uh, there's going to be a Google spreadsheet. with a, it's, a, it's a link. It's going to link you to the exchange and wallet fees, uh, and it looks like this. And I'm going to direct you here because there's been some problems with, with uh, links and people going to the wrong place uh, as far as like, especially like with Uniswap. So I don't want that to happen to you. So um, just go here because this is the right link, and I know it is because I use it. Anyhow, look at Simple Swap. Uh, you don't need to sign up. Just click here. And then you click there. So this is going to be a two-parter. Okay, you're going to need Simple Swap, and you're going to need a Theta wallet. So uh, first things first, it's going to say just to just so you're uh, you know aware of how this all works. So Simple Swap, there's two types: floating rate and fixed rate. If you click on fixed rate, and let's just use Ethereum, whatever you have for your cryptocurrency, I'm going to say Ethereum. And if we look for Theta, it's not there. Okay, so you got to go to floating rate. You got to make sure you click on that. Make sure Ethereum is there. Click on this. And we're going to look at theta. Whoops. Got to be able to spell it. And it's going to ask us, enter the recipient's theta address. That's us. So what we got to do is we got to go to this website. It's called thetatoken.org. And it's, you're going to click on this thing called wallet. And of course, I already have a wallet, but uh, you don't. So you're going to click on create wallet. And you're going to set a new password, whatever that is. I don't know what you want to do. And then re-enter password and then click right there. And then download the key store. And the key store is just this little little file that you can store on your computer. So when you want to access your wallet, you can uh, get into it. Also, it's going to also give you that seed phrase so you can write that down. So just write it down. It makes it super simple, right? Okay. But uh, here, I already have a wallet. I'm going to unlock it. So again, there's ways to unlock it by using that key store I talked about, by using the uh, mnemonic uh, phrase, if you have a private key, or if you have a, a hardware wallet like a Trezor or a Ledger. I'm just going to use 
the key store because it's way easier. The mnemonic I've already written down in my cool um, stone book. If you don't have one of those, uh, good luck getting them because they're all sold out. But uh, my friend uh, Freddie, he's got some coming in. Uh, so I'll let you know when those get, those get in there. So let me just get the key store. I'm going to, so I got the key in there and then there's my password. I'm going to unlock my wallet. And look out, I got 1,000, 1,800, almost 1,900 uh, theta that I bought. Wow. All right, so what I'm going to need is I want to receive, and I'm going to copy my public address. Remember, public address, you paste it anywhere you want to. Private address, private keys, keep those yourself. I don't want to know those. The only people that want to know those are scammers. So we're going to copy this. Your address has been copied. I'm going to go back to simple swap. So let's do this. Let's use, instead of Ethereum, let's see if we can use XRP. That's pretty fast. And uh, it's pretty much stable coin anyhow, right? So XRP, and we're gonna look for theta. Oh, the minimum, so there's always, sorry, there's always minimum amounts, 247 XRP. So for this one, let's put in, so let's see, 247, I'll just do it 250, I guess. It's like 80, 80 bucks? I don't know. Uh, 70, whatever. So, okay, so we're gonna get back theta and let's put a theta address in there, which put that right there. And we'll click exchange. So remember, so with XRP, you must put in this thing called a destination tag. Now, we can use Ethereum. Well, that's probably gonna be super slow and kind of pricey. You can use Bitcoin. Uh, I don't know how fast that is these days. Uh, but XRP is pretty darn quick. So let's just do this destination tag and whatever else. Let me. So wherever you have your cryptocurrency uh, on whatever wallet or platform, whatever else, um, that's where you're gonna send your XRP to or to your Ethereum, whatever else. So I've got a little... I got a little uh, XRP on my Coinbase wallet. I'm gonna click on the little um, send, like a paper airplane. How much am I sending? 250, whoops, $250. Let me switch that, 250 XRP. And I'm gonna continue to, where am I sending it to? Well, I'm gonna click on the QR code and uh, right there. Scan that guy. Note, and I'll just put a little note in here. Simple swap for theta memo or destination tag 2612205 And it will not let you go without doing that. I'm gonna click preview. And just so you know, memo is the same thing as destination tag. All right, so we're sending $71.76 or 250 XRP to blah, 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 this address. And we're gonna pay with the XRP wallet, Coinbase fee zero, like that, network fee zero, total seven. Let's send now, see what happens. Okay, sent 7176 to REMV, and last VSC, try to takes a few seconds. That'll be interesting to see actually. So um, first thing, first things first, remember that exchange ID, copy, copy that, because you might wanna get this so we can see the whole thing go down, confirming, exchanging, sending, and finish. That's important. Okay, so it's been about 20 minutes or so, and I had to do some things, but I stepped away. Let's see what we got. So if uh, if it doesn't come up for you, for whatever reason, the uh, swap, remember that, uh, that tracking number that we had, uh, that we definitely did write it down or copied and pasted. So we're gonna copy that or paste it uh, right in there to track your swap. And we're gonna get that uh, icon there, a little search. And okay, so it's already gone through, it's confirmed, the exchange did it, it sent it, and it's finished. So we should have gotten 166 Theta into our Theta wallet. Let's go to the, our Theta wallet and verify that. And there it is. So there you go, there's your uh, your Theta and how to grab it. All right, so that's it, not too bad, I hope. Uh, this will get you on that path to Theta. Now, unfortunately, uh, you can't do it like how, um, how Gemini uh, or Voyager has it, where, or even Coinbase, where they have recurring buys. Every time you want to buy something like that, it's not a set it and forget it. You have to actually go through those steps and get it every time. So hopefully that uh, leads you onto the path to get Theta if you're interested in that. Uh, but that's all, all up to you. All right, let's uh, just jump back. All right, and that's it for today. So hopefully uh, that uh, made sense and helps you all out. But before we take off, just so you know, there's a join now button underneath. Uh, you don't get anything special. It's just uh, $1.99, it's kind of like a tip. And I just give random shout outs. So let's do that. So I got fun uh, Jess Zadra. I've got uh, K Newman. I've got Shift Happens, Joe Griffith, Joseph F, and uh, Timothy Dillon. So thanks to all, uh, everybody who has signed up, really appreciate it. If you like those types of videos, 
There's gonna be two more that's gonna pop up in your left and right. Not sure. YouTube controls all that stuff, just like the ads you may have seen in the beginning, middle, and end. Uh, whether it be scams or legit, I have no control over those. So again, thanks for uh, checking out, and uh, I'll see you on the next one.